Lexus has established its reputation by building cars that are incredibly pleasant, luxurious, and just serene to drive. And there's no better example of that than the LS luxury sedan. This is the newest version, the all-new 2018 LS500, and it's intended to improve upon all that comfort and luxury we've, we've come to expect from the LS. Let's take a look. How does it look? The new LS has a slightly more coupe-like roofline and a sleeker profile overall. That complicated spindle grille is up front, of course, but I think it actually works quite well on the LS. Overall, the 2018 model is a nice visual upgrade for the LS. Maybe it doesn't push any stylistic boundaries, but it's a good-looking car. How's the storage? Big luxury sedans tend to have big trunks, and the LS is no exception. There's 17 cubic feet of space back here, and as you can see, you get a nice wide opening that makes it really easy to fit a lot of suitcases, even though you can't fold down the back seats. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Center console storage is pretty good, although the only other space to store things up front is in the two cup holders. You also get small door pockets for storing some extra beverages. Is it roomy? I have no issue finding space in the front seats where head and leg room are in abundance and adjustability from the power seats is plentiful. The new LS is an inch longer than before and so rear leg room is up by 2.2 inches, meaning that even an NBA player would have plenty of space to stretch out here. How does the interior feel? The inside of the new LS feels a lot fresher and more modern than the old one. I really like the materials mix in here. There's leather covering pretty much everywhere, a lot of really interesting design elements like this one on the dashboard, nicely stitched leather, and these big bolstered seats because we're driving the F Sport model. Now in other LS variants, you can get things like real wood and handmade fabric door cards, although even in this one, I think there's some really interesting detailing going on on the doors, so it's a pretty nice place to spend time. Is it well equipped? As you'd expect from an expensive luxury car, there's an enormous list of things you can equip on the LS. This car, for instance, boasts things like adaptive cruise control with lane keep assist, a digital instrument cluster, heated and cooled seats, a heated steering wheel, a giant color head-up display, a power rear sunshade, and a 23-speaker sound system. You can also equip your LS with a reclining and massaging back seat if you desire, as well as things like wood trim and air suspension. How's the infotainment system? I'm not a big fan of this Lexus system, which has uninspiring graphics, labyrinthine menus, and a distracting touchpad controller. It feels like even simple operations take a whole lot of pointing and clicking. Even turning on the heated seats is a chore, for instance, and using the cursor requires taking your eyes off the road for long periods of time. All told, the competition has much simpler, faster, better-looking systems, and for smartphone users, you won't find support for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Is it a good daily driver? You may have heard people referring to cars as Lexus-like, and it only takes a couple of minutes behind the wheel of this LS to understand what they mean. This is an incredibly tranquil, relaxing place to spend time. It's so quiet, it's so comfortable. I don't really hear the engine or feel it, I don't really feel the automatic transmission, and all the controls have this lovely progressive weighting to them, making it very, very easy to drive. Now, are there quieter cars? Are there more comfortable cars out there? Sure, but the LS is right up near the top of that list. Is it fun to drive? The things that make cars really sporty to drive are kind of antithetical to the things that make cars luxurious to drive, so from a big luxury sedan like this, I don't really expect a high dose of fun. That said, the LS is a lot more fun to drive than the old one. It's just a nicer car to drive. The steering and braking and handling feel are all much improved. And there's certainly a lot of power. This bi-turbo 3.5 litre V6 gives me 416 horsepower. Lexus says I can get to 60 in under 5 seconds, which is nothing to complain about at all. Now, this particular LS has the F Sport package, but like other Lexus F Sport models, it doesn't actually get any more horsepower. It's more about styling and some handling upgrades. On this one specifically, we've got different wheels and this perforated leather steering wheel and so on. Now, this LS is much improved over its predecessor. It really drives very, very well. 
fun to drive, kind of a stretch, but you won't be disappointed when you're behind the wheel. How's the fuel economy? With rear-wheel drive, you'll get 19 miles per gallon city and 30 highway, while this all-wheel drive car is rated for 18 city and 27 mpg highway. Of course, there's also an LS Hybrid, which manages up to 25 city and 33 mpg highway. How much is it? Pricing starts at $75,000, undercutting rivals like the Audi A8, BMW 7 Series and Mercedes S-Class by a significant margin. Moving up to this all-wheel drive F-Sport model requires $84,000, now with options, you can nudge an LS over $100,000, but Lexus says the vast majority will cost right around the $80,000 range after options. What are the negatives? The luxury sedan class is all about innovation and technological prowess. You look at this car's competitors, the Audi A8 has semi-active suspension on all sorts of clever safety technology, the BMW 7 Series is partially made from carbon fiber, the Mercedes S-Class can pretty much drive itself. And so in comparison to those, the LS feels like a pretty mild evolution compared to the last one. And as I touched on before, that infotainment system is really, really disappointing. Who should buy it? The new Lexus LS is a lovely, luxurious sedan. If you're loyal to the Lexus brand and don't necessarily need all of the latest technologies, or you want to save a little bit of money versus going German, well, it's a great choice in this segment. If you were paying attention, you might have noticed I was wearing a new watch. This is the Strat 3, designed by famed Formula One technical illustrator Giorgio Piola. To find out more, visit GiorgioPiola.com.